Hi guys, it's Joey, and this is my witchy vlog for this week for the rune. Uh, well, it's Sigel in my book, and it's also Sawilio in other places, <clears throat> which is wholeness, life force, sun energy. Just to recap, and victory, success, healing, strength, self-confidence. So at the beginning of the week, I had some very interesting sort of bird signs, basically, for lack of a better word. On the way to the neighbouring village, there were five swans, and I took particular notice of them because they were in a field, which was unusual, and then they took off in flight as I watched. On the way back, I saw five pheasants at the edge of a crop field. And additionally, there were so many crows above, all in flight, and flying in these amazing spiralling patterns. And one had a huge piece of mo uh, food in its mouth. And it seemed to be very mystical. There was something other about all of this, and I, I noticed it very acutely, and felt that it would be important going forward. I also, that day found the citrine bed which is in shot for renewing recharging the crystals and my drawing of the rune this rune had a swan on it and it all sort of just poked at this might be important in the upcoming week i did wonder initially if the rune would bring in the energies of lu with its masculine sun energy as well as being connected to tear one of the myths from last week, Lou actually carried the answer a sword at one point and was accused of the need to be in control of everything and being self-centred by Noada. As it turned out, the masculine energies of this rune didn't come through as strongly and it was far more about self-realisation, the path you must follow from individuality as well as sort of acknowledging my ability to rely upon myself and come to terms with parts and parcel of who I was. So I started this week feeling quite connected to the spirit because of these animal signs to begin with. So I, I undertook a meditation as a result and I got a very, very clear message from the Morrigan at the beginning of the week which I wrote down and I feel okay to share. You are my daughter. You, my daughter, are a shield. You have always been a shield. That's the mistake people make, thinking they can take my name, Morrigan's name, and make themselves a powerful weapon. But my sons and daughters, those who I choose, are not weapons by design, they are shields. Honourable defenders against the rising tide. They do not seek to cut others down or injure others to seek acclaim. My sons and daughters walk a separate path, a hard path. Only few can bear the weight and rise to the challenge. Never doubt my love for you, my daughter, you are mine. Hail. And... There, it was moving. It was incredibly moving. And then this follow-up came to me, which I actually shared on Facebook, and it's basically from the Morrigan directly about cutting the cords of negative magic which has been directed against you and there's been a strong protection element coming through this this week. Um, that's why the laid over shield oil, which is my original design and recipe, this one, um, is in shots. It's been frequently used this week as a, a protective barrier. And the spell went like this. I won't be bound. I won't be broken. Deeds unmoving, words unspoken. Raven calls upon the wind. 
evil ties I do rescind. By shield and blade I cut the tie, your spell are made, fie, fie, fie. That evening there was a thunderstorm and I managed to collect a uh, vial's worth of storm water, perfect for serious banishing, new starts, purification and regeneration. I then looked into the Celtic animal symbolism of the animals which had been so prominent, birds which had been so prominent at the beginning of the week. The pheasant, whose ogham is heather, as a sim Celtic animal sim symbolises talking to us of our strengths and is related to the ogham heather. The pheasant is symbolic, are you ready for this? of sun or solar energy, of refinement, sexuality, nobility and virtue. Some argue they may be linked to the phoenix because of their colouring. In Japan they are the divine messenger of Amaratsu, Amaratsu uh, the great sun goddess. When looking... Oh, okay, oh, hang on, that will be in a minute. And then... <coughs> The ogham of the pheasant was heather, which is healing, balance, sacred union, and is a solar <coughs> plant of fertility and love. The other creature of which I saw five was swan ogham, which is the vine, purity, honesty, beauty, and grace. It's also my birth animal, my animal zodiac in the Celtic astrology. is to do with the goddess Ain. She had a cloak of swan feathers and can shapeshift into a bird. Celtic bards wore cloaks decorated with, with swan feathers as music was sacred to Ain, and swan song referred to the last or greatest work of a bard since it was believed that the mute swan was silent all its life until the moment before death when it sang a single beautiful swan song. Sorry. The vine the ogham of the swan is harvest successful completion celebrations. The process of fermentation is linked to the magical symbolism of soul transformation. Finally, the ogham connected with the crow, because we have talked at length about crows, so I don't think we need to go too much into it, more detail, is the elder and his knowledge from experience moving forward, shedding old habits. Transformation, end of one cycle, beginning of a new one, the witch's tree, used in British burial rites to represent the transformation of the spirit as it passed from life to death. Fairy magic transformation, all very relevant with Samhain on the way. It also sort of begins to open up my connection to the Ogham runes, which I will be investigating once these have come to a natural conclusion. <clears throat> I had a look at the Celtic numerology because of the five being the number of pheasants I saw, five being the number of swans I saw. I came across a calculator based on the numering system proposed by Mike Nichols on his page towards the Celtic numerology. My soul urge um, derived from the number of vowels in my name and relating to the subjective inner aspects of my life came up as five. Five is, a mag five is drawn magnetically into the heart of the unexplained and mysterious. Like the five-pointed pentagram, it is often linked to the occult and the magician. Psychic abilities, alternative medicine, a path as a priestess. Further confirmation of my path as a crow priestess for Marin. The two following quotes then came to me. <clears throat> I am the goddess and god, I am the feminine and the masculine, I am the stars above and the earth below, I am the storm and the calm, I am the light and dark, I am truth, I am power, I am love. I call on the goddess to aid me now, show me where, show me how, brighten the path, here for me, as I will it, so might it be. <clears throat> uh, 
After a stressful day involving all sorts of nonsense, I dreamt about shape-shifting into a crow and being able to make myself invisible like an invisible animal. It was fascinating and wonderful. Given I've had a few shamanic hints throughout the week, including the dream, as well as the cat's claw, claw, cat's claw herb, as well as the ever-present crow in my life, it will merit further investigation next week. In previous weeks I had been mulling over the notion of being a crow priestess of Morrigan, um, particularly through experiencing these energies of the rune. The dream of shape-shifting could therefore be the evolution of this path. <clears throat> Given the nastiness of the day again, where I had my individuality threatened, I had to find a way of confronting the issue without playing into the obvious need of the troll for attention. And then later that day, to remind me that there are kind, decent people in the world, things happened. I had been very upset with the situation and that's when I received my handmade gifts from Jude, including the pumpkin decoration I love so much. And following that, I also had an order on the store and went down the post office and there was a beagle puppy outside the post office and I had a great big cuddle. Beagles are one of my favourite dogs. And um, <coughs> it just reminded me that joy comes to us in the small moments. As well as um, a number of people have offered me help and advice this week. Also, there's been hints of Native American crossover this week. Uh, Brendan suggested I look into the, the Crow Mother as a link to Morrigan because of my charm wheel creation, which I showed this week, and it had a very Native American vibe. There was something last week which I've completely forgotten as well, which also had a Native American vibe. And so that I'm going to be looking into a little bit further, that might be a tie to the shamanic link, which I'm going to continue to explore going forward. So all in all, with regards to weight of information, last week was a lot more about the intellectual realm and this week felt a lot more like processing all the emotional side of it. Which makes sense given it's supposed to be about the impulse towards self-realisation, so the processing of things that perhaps came from last week into this week because the two runes are tied together, you know, Along with Tyr, this rune is a rune of success and victory, it has similar energies, so it would make sense that this week would be the sort of rounding off of the energies of last week, the processing, the searching for answers, the connections, the processing and the finding of joy in dark moments. That was interesting about the the sun, you know, the sun sometimes comes through the clouds and reminds us of what joy is. And I had that this week. I had the reminder that even when certain situations are upsetting you and certain people are doing their utmost to try and hurt you, there are still other people out there in the world that are good, decent people that just reach out and try and do something kind or help just for the sake of doing it, not because they're getting anything from it, but just because they can. So joy in the small moments came through this week. There was a lot of um, messages directly from the goddess this week. There was, a, you know, there was a lot of protection element this week. She's been very there this week. Like some weeks she'll step back and just allow me to search and walk the path and figure things out. But she's been very, very present this week. Um, the, the starting off with sort of reconfirming that, you know, I'm, you're my daughter, I love you, this is who you are, and this is why you are my daughter. You know, you don't go thinking that being my daughter is going to make you a badass. 
or whatever the people that follow dark goddesses for the wrong reasons think. It's to do with, as she put it, being a shield and being a defender of whatever it is that is most important in your heart. There's, this, you know, this, she's been there, she's been protecting me, she's been providing me with spell work to protect myself, which has been moving and difficult in some respects. And I do think that she speaks quite often through the kind acts of other people. That That is spirit and divinity coming through other people because through their humanity, through their kindness, through the beautiful things they do, I'm reminded of the goodness of people, of the world, that it's not all nonsense, it's not all difficulty, it's not all hardship, it's not all people for selfish agenda and I got to the point in the middle of the week where I just felt really really sad and I was just like does anybody do anything for other than gain a selfish motive I felt very much like that in the middle of the week and the goddess just turned that around and showed me that you know some people do things just because they can just just out of pure kindness and it completely and utterly turned my week around and made me feel a hundred times better. It's why Jude's um, crow is in shot rather than crow feathers, which would work just as well within the sort of shape-shifting theme of here, but I wanted to include something that, she, that Jude herself sent me, and because it turned my week around, it did. It, it, it helped me push through the things I've been dealing with and that was really great so it's not a huge amount of spiritual information perhaps this week but it's been an emotional week and has helped sort of come around and help bring me a sense of balance which I think is what this week was mainly about about balancing out the very articulate intellectual week I had last week with volumes of information and then this week was more about balancing out the emotional side of it so that's it for this week. Many blessings.